Hi everyone, Liz Klimek here, Planetarium Manager at the South Carolina State Museum. Well, in the previous episode, we focused on the constellation of Orion and talked about some of the deep sky objects that you can see in that part of the sky. For this episode, I'd like to continue to look at the same part of the sky, but focus on a few different things. So let's go ahead and jump to this upcoming Saturday, January 30th at 8 p.m. We are looking directly south from right here in Columbia, South Carolina, as we usually do. And if we pan our gaze off to the southeast, here we have the constellation of Orion once again. Very familiar pattern to a lot of people and he is chasing down Taurus the bull. But Orion is not facing that bull alone. He does have the help of two hunting companions. He has a big dog and a little dog. So the big dog is called Canis Major and he's over here, looks something like this. There's his head, his body and tail, his front legs and his back legs. He looks something like this. And then Orion's second dog is the little dog. He is up here and looks just like a stick, just a straight line connecting two stars. Go figure. But <laughs> there is Orion and his two hunting dogs facing down the bull altogether. Now, if we look at the big dog here, you might notice there's a very bright star in his chest. This is a star called Sirius, and it's the brightest star you can see in the night sky. The astronomer's joke is, just remember, it's seriously bright, haha. -ha. This star is larger and more luminous than our own star, the sun, but then again, so are many other stars in the night sky. This star just happens to look so bright because it's relatively close to us at about eight and a half light years. That means that the light that you're seeing from Sirius is about eight and a half years old. You can compare that to the light from our closest star, the sun, which is about eight minutes old when it gets to us. Stars like the ones in the constellation of Orion for example, are hundreds to thousands of light years away. Betelgeuse up here and Rigel down here are actually much brighter than Sirius, but they're not as bright in the sky because they're much, much farther away than Sirius is. Now, Orion and his two hunting dogs are part of the official modern set of 88 star patterns that make up the constellations. You can kind of think of them as an internationally recognized way of mapping out the night sky, as agreed upon by an organization called the International Astronomical Union. So let me show you all of the official star patterns that are up in this part of the sky right now in this direction. It's important to note though that throughout human history, people all over the world have looked up at the sky, played connect the dots with the stars and made up their own pictures and oftentimes their own stories to go along with them, such that every culture has their own constellation set. The ones that are part of the official modern set like you see here are just the ones that were agreed upon by the International Group of Astronomers back in the 20s. But people continue to see new star patterns in the sky all the time. And when some of those become popular, they become a kind of unofficial modern constellation. And there's a fancy word for that called asterism, kind of like a celestial celebrity, if you will. So asterisms are patterns of stars that are uh, not part of the official set, but they're kind of talked about as if they're official constellations. And I'm gonna pan our gaze around here so that we're looking in the opposite direction towards the north. I went around pretty quickly, but hopefully you got a glimpse of some of those other official constellations in this direction. And I wanted to face north because I want to show you the most famous example of an asterism, the Big Dipper. So the Big Dipper is 
um, actually part of an official constellation called the Big Bear or Ursa Major. And here is Ursa Major over here. To see all of the bear, I'm gonna have to fast forward time just an hour, nudge that forward so that we're at 9 p.m. And let me take off some of these lines and labels so I can show you just the Big Bear. So here's the Big Dipper, kind of looks like a saucepan forming the back half of the bear. And here are the rest of the bear stars. So she looks just like that. So the Big Dipper is a famous asterism, but what are some other ones? Specifically, what are some asterisms that might be part of the winter sky? To check those out, let's pan our gaze back over towards the south. So we're turning around once again and looking directly south, this time one hour forward from where we were at 9 p.m. Okay, well, if you take this star here called Procyon, and that's in uh, the constellation of the little dog. So take Procyon, then come up and pick up our seriously bright star Sirius, then come up to the star Betelgeuse, which is kind of in Orion's armpit. We have traced out a large equal sided triangle. And so many people have noticed this triangle that it's come to be called the winter triangle. Now, let me change our view here just a little bit so that I can actually show you that triangle. There it is, just like that. Now there is a summer version there's a summer triangle, um, and if you missed it, we did a special episode devoted to the summer triangle this past summer in VR format. So definitely check that out if you haven't seen it. Uh, the summer triangle is a triangle you can see high overhead in the summertime and is much bigger than the winter triangle here, which is a little bit of a smaller triangle that you can see in the wintertime. Now, because people seem to just love making geometrical shapes in the sky, let's try another one here. If we go back to Procyon, then come up or down here to our seriously bright star Sirius, but then now go over here to the star Rigel in, in um, Orion's foot, come up to this star Aldebaran, which is the red eye of Taurus the bull, then come up to this bright star called Capella, then jog over to this star called Pollux in Gemini the Twins, back down to where we started, Procyon. Can you see what we have traced out? I'll go ahead and connect those dots. We've made almost a hexagon. Not uh, these sides aren't equal sided, but it does have six sides or it's kind of a crude circle. So this has come to be called the winter hexagon or the winter circle. I don't know about you, this pattern of stars really doesn't stand out to me when I look in this part of the sky. I usually see Orion first, then maybe that winter triangle, which would be in here. But this is really just a way to connect all of the brighter stars are the brightest stars in this part of the sky. So I don't know, what do you think? Does that stand out to you? Can you see that winter hexagon, winter circle, or maybe a different shape jumps out at you? That's okay too. It does not have to be a geometrical shape, promise. But I think asterisms like this arise because they're made of the brighter stars and with so many of us living in light polluted areas these brighter stars are really all that a lot of people can see to an urban stargazer the night sky looks very different than it does to someone who lives far outside of the city a city bound stargazer won't be able to see many of the constellations and will just naturally make up their own patterns based on what they are able to see above them so for example, let's go back to our other view here and look at Orion and his two hunting dogs. When you look at this little dog here, honestly, you probably won't see this star over here with, uh, from 
downtown Columbia, for example, you might just see this one. And if you look at Orion's big dog, Canis Major, notice that it's really hard to see all of the dog unless I click on it and show you that these three very faint stars is part of that constellation. You might only see this bright star Sirius and maybe a couple of other stars and that's it. So your imagination will again naturally make up patterns based on the brighter stars that uh, you are able to see. But um, go out and you know, have fun with it. So go out, have fun making up your own asterisms. Um, take part in a stargazing activity that's been going on for millennia. Personalize the sky and make it something meaningful to you. So for example, when I look at the sky here, I do see a person standing upright, but I love to tell people that instead of seeing a hunter with his two hunting dogs, uh, bearing down on the bull or maybe trying to get to the seven maidens that the bull, at least in some stories, is trying to protect. I see instead a person with his arm up raised because he's just thrown a stick for the big dog to fetch. So maybe you see that something completely and completely different. That is totally fine as well. Again, go out and enjoy the night sky, which is freely available to all. Well, I hope this gets you excited about stargazing. Thank you so much for joining me here today. Don't forget that the State Museum's Observatory does a Facebook live stream on Saturdays. Check out our website and uh, Facebook page for more details and information about that. Definitely tune in with some astronomy questions. We always love getting those. Don't forget to click below to like, subscribe, comment, share, all of that good stuff. And as always, take care of yourselves. Definitely take care of each other. Thanks again and hope to see you next time.